welcome back to my 12 weeks of keto series. It's officially time to update you guys on week two. Well, week two, instead of saying week two didn't go as planned, I didn't have a plan for week two, and I realized this a couple days in. It's April 29th now. I updated my one week update two days ago, so it's Saturday today. And again, as I mentioned, I'm going out to eat tonight and tomorrow for lunch. But I just realized, I don't really have a plan for this week. I'm trying to like intuitive eat, but I also need a guide and a plan. Like, I need, I need a plan. I need a plan. So after realizing I didn't have a plan, my first order of business was to make a plan. As I talked about last week and a couple times in the past week's vlogs, I was eating out three times this week, so it was very difficult for me to organize a very strict plan, especially for this week, because eating out, there's not enough nutrition facts available for me to be on point with my macros, but I did do the best I could. In the intro of this video, I showed you guys clips of the food that I've eaten over the past week, including those that I ate while I was out having dinner with my friends and having lunch and, you know, trying to stay low-carb keto while at a all-you-can-drink dinner party, like a course dinner party. So that's kind of what was going on with my food this week, so let's check out the data. For week two, I didn't really have a plan, so that can clearly be seen by looking at these graphs. Um, the only downfall to not having a plan, even though I was eating relatively close to the diet was there's no one particular factor that I can point out to say oh my weight up my weight went up at this point because of this or my you know my energy was like this because of this because the whole week was very sporadic uh, if we look at the first gra pair of graphs here we have the on the left is the pounds so my weight over the past week and on the right is the, the weight of body fat over the past week. You can see there are some fluctuations going up and going down a little and then coming back down a little more. Again, last week I did have the egg fast, so I probably you know, didn't, wasn't carrying a lot of water. I think that this week, because I did have more carbs, um, I tried to keep them near 20 20 grams but a lot of the days ended up being higher and I'll show that in the next graph however um, just by looking at these two you can see that I pretty much stayed in maintenance with some uh, weight gain and fat gain through the middle of the week which um, was technically the weekend because it's Thursday real quickly this is the macros that I consumed over the week uh, one of my big issues was not necessarily um, getting in too much fat because as you can see fat is the most or the highest percentage that I have consumed. Um, however, I was very, I guess you could say because I didn't have a plan, I wasn't sure how to, how much I should be eating. I just try to stay under calories and um, eat carbs when I felt like I needed them and this is kind of what happened again three days the 29th 30th and second I was eating out which um, contributes to the higher caloric intake but overall I mean you can see I'm getting 65 to 80 percent fats in a day carbs have been between 5% and the highest was 13%. The only uh, problem with looking at these measurements is I know they're not completely accurate, especially on the 29th, 30th, and 2nd, because when I was eating out, there was no nutrition facts for me to reference um, in any of those cases. So it was kind of trying to find the closest thing on my fitness pal and use that as my reference. This next table is two weeks worth of all of the data that I've collected so far. 
which includes my weigh-in weights, body fat percentages, um, the body fat weight in pounds and kilos, as well as my caloric intake, fat, protein, and carb um, grams over the past two weeks. I labeled the first week um, where I did the egg fast, and then you can see in the second week, which started April 27th, I was kind of all over the place. Um, I didn't have a plan. I was just trying to eat intuitively, but at the same time, I was second-guessing myself with everything. Um, so, like, the first few days, I was just like, well, let's just get this, this cocoa and stuff out of my house. My carb intake was based was from the cocoa cheese sweetener fun mixture that I got to make up. So I did enjoy those two days, but it did put my carbs almost to 40 grams, which is still low. However, I would like to keep them definitely under 20. And then you can see on the 29th and 30th, I actually did not overeat in calories. I was actually lower than my caloric goal. However, I'm sure I could be off in my estimations, but I did my best to track what I ate in my fitness pal. Also, the night of the 29th, I didn't even sleep till 6 in the morning, so the next day, it wasn't like a regular day for me, so it was really off, and I'm sure that reflected in how my body was holding water. You can see that on the morning of the 30th, which, you know, after no sleep, my body fat, quote-unquote, was up to almost 60 pounds, so I was probably holding some water that day. And then the last thing I want to point out is that on May 2nd, even though I did have a dinner and drinking party, and I did consume probably more than 2,100 calories, but I I was able to stay low carb at the, the party, but of course the total carbs throughout that whole day, I guess, um, and, you know, like, yeah, I was watching my food, but there is, you know, hidden calorie or hidden carbs and certain things. I did have nuts after the drinking party because everybody went out to a bar afterwards. So I just had nuts because I didn't want to pay five bucks for a drink and nuts were cheaper. Um, and then I did have like a little cup of the low, low carb ice cream on my way home. I don't know why. Um because that the polydextrose and the fiber really really hit my stomach hard um but it was kind of one of those things that like I've been craving so I just like got it out of the way I guess that's my excuse the last two graphs that I'm going to show you are just the combination of week 1 and week 2 so you can see I started about 171.6 pounds I believe and I went up a little because I ate like crazy, and then I did the egg fast, so I went down. And then this week was kind of unplanned, so I went up and down. And I'm currently about uh, 170.6 or 7 pounds. So I am one pound down from the start of this experiment. My fat percentage is also lower. So my body fat has decreased uh, almost one and a half pounds, however that works. <laughs> so I must have gained, been gaining muscle as well over the past two weeks. I guess you could say what I'm doing is working if my goal is to maintain my weight. Um, I am going down slightly, which I'm totally fine with. I'm not in a hurry to lose weight. I'm really more concerned with living a healthy lifestyle and improving my health. I am working out now because I do have a Spartan race at the end of the month. So I'm not really concerned if I don't lose weight right now because I I hope I'm putting on muscle because I'm going to need to muscle through a lot of those obstacles on the course. I don't think I've mentioned what I'm doing this month for workouts yet. So I'll just really quickly say that I'm doing another program on Derby.com. It is the Foundation Light program. And the reason why I chose that program when I should be probably working harder 
is because my family and I have actually started a group to support each other and we're all starting the same program or we're all doing the same program this month. We started May 1st. So I wanted to choose a program that everybody would be able to adapt to and because Derby does offer like different levels for each program, which is basically you just increase your sets. I'm doing a higher level of this, so I'm doing more sets than someone who's just starting the workouts. Along with that, I'm also doing one of Derby's burpees challenges and their crunches challenge. So the burpees will be increasing every day, and I hate burpees. Okay, that's a little bit of a strong word. I don't hate burpees, but I'm not very good at them. So hopefully by the time the race comes around... Um, the reason why I chose the burpees challenge is because if you can't get over an obstacle during the race, your punishment or like your what you have to do in order to officially clear the obstacle and move on is burpees. Um, I think it's like 30 burpees per obstacle so I need to do some burpees because I've never climbed uh, I've never climbed a rope in my life. I'm probably not going to be able to climb the rope when I'm there so if that obstacle is there then I'm definitely doing burpees at least once. We will see. We will talk about that later. So I am working out. I should be gaining muscle, so I'm not too worried if my scale doesn't move as quickly. Um, of course, I'm watching the body fat percentage also. We're going to see what happens. Okay, so let's finally talk goals and what my plans are for the next week, for the next month, and for the rest of this, pro this experiment. First... Da, da, da. Last week, I didn't have a plan. Starting this week, I've actually made a, a budget for the next month as well as a two-week sort of um, keto challenge, I guess you could say. My budget for the month is about $100 for groceries. It's about, um, you know, $25, 2,500 yen a week for food. So that will hopefully stop me from buying, um, like, just the extra food, like, you know, getting a sweetener or the cocoa or cream cheese or something. And I'll just stick with the meats, the vegetable, vegetables that I need, and any fats that I need. Along with that, my two-week keto challenge is to keep my daily carbs, not net carbs, but daily carbs as a whole, under 20 grams. It's already recommended that you do that for keto, so I'm going to stay strict on that rule. I'm actually not going to worry about my calories and other intakes as much. I'm just, just going to focus on making sure my carbs are under 20 grams. Of course, because this experiment does require me to track my calories and, you know, fat protein intake, I will be logging all my food onto my fitness pal. And there you have it for week two. We saw that after a week of not really having a plan, that you should make a plan. So, have a plan. Failure to plan is planning to fail. I don't think I failed this past week, but I think I could have done something to provide better data than I could have without, you know, going all over the place. So I'll see you guys next Thursday for my week three update, and then we're going to see if this 20 carbs a day and this $25 a week budget is really going to work. But that's the plan. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you're enjoying seeing the information and the data come out. Feel free to comment if you're on your own sort of eating lifestyle change or journey. It doesn't have to be keto, it doesn't have to be low carb. I think um, a lot of different diets can work for different people and I would just like to be able to support you any way that I can no matter what you're doing. Feel free to like and comment below and I will see you guys next week. Have a good one!